Hello hackers, welcome back to Pwn College. I'm Jan, today we're talking about um, exploitation scenarios and specifically vulnerability side effects. Um, uh, a very high level of this, you'll delve more into this in the practice problems. Of course, this module, we are putting together everything we've learned in previous modules. Today, focusing on basically shell coding and memory corruption or uh, and, and, and jailing it in an interesting way. All right, um, my advice to you, as you learn to combine um, these different techniques into an end-to-end -end attack chain, is don't forget that control flow hijacking through memory corruption is not the only thing that you can do. Vulnerabilities in programs come in all shapes and sizes, and not all of them will allow you to um, hijack control flow. Not all of them are, um, uh, some of them will allow you to do more than just hijack control flow and so on. You explored this a bit in the memory errors module, but now this is gonna become more and more important as you learn to truly take control of these programs um, over the course of this module. So let's look at a motivating example. We have a jail, if you um, remember from the um, uh, jail, hold on, let me uh, turn off the camera so that you don't have to, that you, oh yeah, just jail dot dot dot. All right, if you recall from the um, jailbreaking module, the sandboxing module, um, this is a seccomp jail that will only allow us to read and write. That's really bad news. Um, we can't open the flag. Um, and if you, hyper-focus on using the stack overflow uh, that's provided to us by the gets to hijack execution, you're going to end up in a situation where you're stuck in this jail. Instead, what you need to look at is what else does this gets allow me to do? In this case, there's a structure on the stack that has the shell code and the flag after the shellcode on the stack, whether or not that shellcode should be sandboxed. And if that flag is set, then and which is set by default, then that sandbox is, um, is set up. So if you overflow with a bunch of A's, this check will pass. Program.sandbox will be A. That's of course evaluated to true in C, anything non-zero is true. Um, and what uh, ends up happening is the setcom filter is applied. Let's take a look at, at how that um, might look. All right, so I, I created this um, sandbox.c, exactly what we saw on the slides. Um, and I compiled it, and I compiled it with uh, executable stack because we need to execute shellcode on the stack, of course the same um, program could be created without the need to execute the shell in the stack, but this is much simpler if it's on a slide. All right, so um, we can grab some shell code. This is some shell code that I wrote that just does an open and send file. So let's um, grab it and copy that. Ah, it copied across two lines. Okay. And um, pipe this through without the N E. So we want the new line on the on the end so that gets will actually terminate. And pipe it through um, sandbox and says bad system club because we tried to do an open and it's not allowed by the um, sandbox. Uh, if we put a bunch of A's here, to overflow the buffer, of course this will overflow our buffer, but of course we have a bad system call. If we, um, for our shell code, just do a ret, and then we put a bunch of A's. As you'll see, oh yeah, because the program tries to exit, uh, of course the seccom filter is already applied. 
So we're, we're, we're in trouble, right? Of course, if we think about the program logic and instead of A's, we overflow with, oops, we overflow with null bytes, then that'll have a side effect of disabling this check. So let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna put in 100 null bytes. Gotta be a better way. Okay, perfect. Put in a bunch of null bytes. And it works. Our open send file shellcode works because we overflowed this shellcode uh, variable into sandbox and overrode it with nulls. Memory corruption does not always lead to control execution, uh, code execution directly. In this case, the program already gave you code execution, but you needed to use a memory corruption vulnerability together with that code execution to actually disable the sandbox and get the flag. All right, the bad news of this is that some um, side effects in a program are fatal. Consider this example. You have a shellcode and you have a copy of the shellcode. And the copy of the shellcode has an allocated buffer on the heap that is stir copied into from the shellcode, right? This is really bad news because when you overflow this shellcode buffer to then ideally overflow the stack and redirect control flow into your shellcode, um, if all the mitigations are disabled, like it's, you know, 1999, um, sorry, there we go. Let me move that video. Um, you're going to have a hard time because you will overwrite your shellcode uh, copy pointer, most likely with something invalid, and your program will crash here, this stir copy. You have to be very careful in these scenarios to keep the state of the program viable for further execution, at least until you achieve your goals, right? So in this case, when you overflow shellcode, you would need to rewrite um, shellcode copy with a valid address. You're actually familiar with this, with the requirement to fix up the canary in the shellcode, um, um, in the memory errors module. This is analogous Keep it in mind as you create complex multi-stage exploits or multi-stage attacks that uh, sometimes your attacks have to be very, very careful. All right, um, that's all I'll say right now about side effects. Um, you'll explore a lot more in the press problems. Good luck.